And a good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. I'm here, me, Adiba. Well, tonight on the show is the aftermath of the UEFA Champions League. We will talk about it. The Super Falcons are still in the news. We will talk about that as well. Preparations for the Olympics in top gear. It will get us talking. And right now, as we speak, match is currently going on in the UEFA Europa League and, of course, the Conference uh, League. So a lot to talk about on the show. Well, of course, it's a two-man show. My colleague Austin of Corn Akpad is suited and ready as we take you on a trip across the money spin in World of Sports. Well, greetings to you, Amy, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action-packed world of sports in Europe. More action in the Europa League and, of course, the Europa Conference League. Half-time at Anfield. Surprise, surprise. It's Liverpool 0 at Atlanta. What I was looking for. Super Eagles forward. Ademola Lookman uh, in that one, but it's a substitute waiting to come on uh, for Atalanta. So, good one for his team. We're also monitoring other games. So, we should have some fun talking about what's going on in the Europa League. Yeah, I mean. All right. So, uh, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, let's quickly introduce our partner in uh, the Lagos uh, studio with us. Damlela Onifade joins us. Uh, Damlela, uh, greetings to you. Uh, gives me so much joy to have you on the day when we can talk about the Super Falcons actually <laughs> going to Paris because our hearts went about. But once again, thank you for finding out time to be with us on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, at least I was positive last week. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that it didn't disappoint. Uh, pleasure always. All right. And um, we're going to start a bit differently tonight. Just like I said, match is currently going on. And uh, when this usually happens, Austin is uh, shortly between being with us and telling us what is uh, currently uh, happening. And um, the news that I find surprising is that Liverpool was trailing before we came into the studio against Atlanta. So I don't know if that has changed. Uh, and I know West Ham and uh, the guys from Bayer Leverkusen are also uh, busy slugging it out. So Austin, what's the situation in the four games, especially in the Europa? Uh, in the Europa League, as I said, the opening, uh, my opening, uh, Liverpool going into half time, uh, trailing by a single goal against Atalanta. Uh, West Ham uh, also uh, busy, goalless in that one, and of course, some action going on in the Europa League. But let's just wait, I'll come back and give you proper updates here, me, as we get on with the show. All right, all right, all right, we'll get. Uh, updates uh, with that one. Um, Dan Lola, let me give you your chance under the sun uh, before we listen to uh, FIFA Executive Council member, former NFF President, Amadji Pei. He's going to talk about things surrounding women's football, some things we need to hear. And our man also no Konak man caught up with him. But it, it would be unfair for me not to allow you to talk about how did it feel? Um, there was this ongoing debate about how we got the ticket, some said was game plan executed. So, I mean, I just want to get just in, in a minute or less your thoughts, or we should just forget everything now we're in Paris. Let's just move on. I, I think for me, there is no need for over analysis of it. Um, those women went into the game, they know they had 180 minutes uh, to either wait another four years for the, another Olympics, for some of them never to attend any Olympics. Yes. They knew that was what they were, uh, that was in front of them. Uh, Wild Drum had the uh, the privilege of probably breaking what is becoming a genes for Nigeria, despite Still. dominating in Africa and not being able to scale the African order to an Olympics. And so that was the tax. And the tax was very simple. Whatever, whichever way you're going to get it, just get to the Olympics. And for me, in 180 minutes, um, whether World Rome get it right, the players executed it right, that is not what is important right now. What is important is the fact that we are not just at the Olympics. We had to do it uh, stopping the African champion from getting there for oh, me. That, and that's the beauty for me. That's, that's beauty. the beauty. That's a good way to look at it. All right, uh, let's move on. Well, there's an imminent announcement that will uh, be made by the Confederation of African uh, Football. They're expected to make a statement uh, on the kickoff date for uh, this year's African Women's Cup of Nations. Uh, of course, speaking to channels, uh, television, uh, channel sports in uh, London, CAF Executive Committee uh, member, Amaji Pili confirmed it is on the top, it is on the top uh, agenda. It will talk about that and some other issues. I mean, it talk about a whole uh, lot of issues. So let's just allow you to listen to uh, that interview and uh, pick a lot of uh, pieces of all that he said, talked about that and 
some other ages. Uh, let's listen to him and come back uh, to talk some more. Let's begin with the state of football in Nigeria. Do you like where we are at the moment? Yeah, I mean, um, we, I think we are doing very well. Very, very well. And um, I'm very proud of the current administration. I can tell you, I'm not trying to patronize them. I was there for eight years, and I know um, how difficult it is to run football in Nigeria because everybody's a coach. You know, the people become judgmental from the beginning. And um, you have to carry on. You have to trudge on. There are a lot of difficulties that we sponsor us, that with uh, <clears throat> government. But so far, they've been able to surpass, they've been able to surmount every obstacle that has come their way. And the best news for them is that they have a minister that is ready, very patriotic, a minister that refused to listen to traducers for the betterment of Nigerian football. You know, and I uh, 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 think that that's one major asset they have in this administration. And um, the president and the minister, they are working very well. The synergy is unbelievable. And um, with that, I believe they are going to do a lot better. They just qualified for the Olympics yesterday. After 18 years, we couldn't do it. The previous administration couldn't do it, but they've done it. And um, I believe um, it just, we just keep giving them time. It's, it, football is, is, is a marathon. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not a sprint. You keep running, you keep running until you get it right. And because of it, you are going to meet ups, you are going to meet downs, you are going to see good, bad, and ugly. But the truth is, just remain steadfast, remain prayerful, and you'll get it right. But we're supposed to be consolidating on our strength. For instance, the under-17 is in, should I say, scattered state? No coaches for the under-17 for the Super Eagles, and you say it's in a good state. What are your parameters for judging that football in Nigeria at the moment is in a good place? Yeah, I know about it. Um, the next Eagles, the future Eagles. The future Eagles, they are the under 17. If you don't know, just know. They've been together. They've been camping together. They've been doing things together. They have coaches, even though possibly on interim basis or out of basis, but they are there under the internship. So, and that's the beginning. If you have your under 17, automatically you have your under 20, and you have the future Eagles. So, I don't think you should understand that it is not 100%. You know, in any situation, even in your business, no matter how Elon Musk will also tell you that it is not 100%. In any endeavor you find yourself, you just keep trudging on and be prayerful about it. And that's what they've been doing, considering the circumstances we are. When I left NFL, the 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 the, the ice injury was about uh, uh, five six hundred, you know. It went out to about one thousand seven hundred. Now it's coming down. Kudos to the government, one thousand one hundred, you know. So all those things are fair because you are playing. You are not playing within the Nigerian space. You are playing outside the Nigerian space, and you have to spend a lot of forex. And again, what is your budget? Your budget, for example, is determined is based on maybe dollar at. It's 900. They didn't know the dollar would go to 1,500, 1,600. How did they meet this shortfall? So there are so many things you people don't understand. Not until you sit there, you will now see all those things. And you have to be very dynamic for it to come off it. It's very, so you have to prioritize. You have to look at things that we need to do. Do we need to take coaches on permanent basis? Do we need to take them on interim basis? Do we need to select? There are a lot of intricacies and dynamics to this thing. Trust me on it. So it's not as if they don't want to. Ibai is very seasoned. He was an integral part of my administration. And beyond, he was also a very key factor in Megali's administration. He's an accountant. And I believe so far, I don't think he has done badly. They are shortlisting coaches for the Super Eagles job. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Uh, well, I'm not, uh, uh, um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an authority in this because I don't know. But what I know is that um, some coaches were shortlisted, some applied, and uh, somebody asked me a question, you know, if you were to subscribe to a local coach, and I corrected the right away that I don't believe in the word local, they're indigenous coaches, and that if I were to subscribe to anyone at the moment, because of the smooth transition from Pisero, I should say Fini the judge. And I don't have any regrets about it. If it was Amunike that was there, 
during this transition, I would have said Amunike because they have the same gifts. They play the same level. They won the same tournament, you know? But the difference between Amunike and Finidi is that Finidi as coach came down to Nigeria and coached a local club, one of our indigenous clubs, and he also won the league with this indigenous club. Finidi is somebody that I, I, I brought him on as one of the assistant coaches. And when he was interviewed, you could see the humility and modesty in him. And if you see controversy among some of his colleagues, you will never hear anything about Finidi being a player's agent, Finidi collecting money from this. No. He's somebody that is prime and really and truly wants to work. That just means you're supporting no, no, no. the judge. I, I listen, if, if, if they were to pick an indigenous coach right now, trust me, it is my strong personal opinion. I've worked with him, I've seen him. I believe I would definitely go for him. And what do we need to do is just basically to build capacity around him. Capacity, occasion, or spice by technology. All right, I'm actually speaking to our man, Austin Kodakman, on a whole lot of issues. And some that you didn't get to hear, especially the part about women's football. But Adam Lala, before we well, revert to Austin, he, a lot of pieces to pick. Talk about indigenous coaches, talk about football development in Nigeria, uh, talk about the people at the helm. Really, I, I mean, sports minister, always good to have uh, people at the helm who, who see beyond all of this politics, just want football. Uh, to grow and, and all of those issues, but what, what, are, the, what are the high points uh, of uh, that interview that, that, that you probably want to say a few things on? Uh, for me, the, the, the high point is, um, is his choice for who, if he was in charge, um, who the Super Eagles coach would have been. But he said his own um, strong, uh, personal, strong opinion. personal opinion. Um, we also know that he still has a very strong relationship with those running Influence, Nigerian football yeah. now. Um, it's not even, I mean, the bulk of them were with him for eight years anyway. So, uh, so that, that, that's quite interesting for me because uh, one begins to wonder if he was actually giving us a scoop into what the future will be. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> what might happen <laughs> so, uh, in the next few weeks. Job, uh, is concerned. But more interestingly is that I, I know we had that conversation here as well a few weeks ago. Uh, and I don't begrudge him for that choice because that was the same basis upon which I said, if we must go to um, indigenous, using his words now, uh, Finidi tends to have a very strong position uh, because of the reasons it's he has It's easy given. to make a strong case for him. For him, it's easy. Um, although I also fear for him leading to those two friendlies. Uh, but good enough for him, he won one. Um, but if you also have to flip it with that statement that the quote is as good as his last match, uh, some other people might also have some other arguments uh, with that. But uh, it will be very unfair to judge him on friendlies. I mean, Pesero did not have uh, the best friendly record coaching the Super Eagles, but I mean, Pesero probably has the best, uh, of course, not probably, um, has the best AFCON record since 2013 uh, for the Super Eagles. So that, that's the balance. Uh, and I also think that Finidi, of all the the indigenous coaches you want to mention at this time is the most active of them. Uh, so I, I think on that count, I agree with him. On those parts of the politics, I leave that to his likes because, I mean, they are the ones playing the politics. We just want Nigerian football and Nigerian sport generally to develop. Um, about Nigeria going into that direction, Austin asked him about age grade football, talked about the future Eagles, talked about the intricacies behind the scenes. Do, do you agree that we have a good standing? That, Every, everything still looks all right with eighth grade football? Um, I, I wouldn't say we have a good standing, but one thing you can't begrudge of the haters of Pinnick is that there was effort in that direction. Yes. Uh, the future goes as an effort. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have these MPFL um, on the 15, uh, uh, which is also good. You can't begrudge that. And we also cannot begrudge the fact that we saw development. Uh, uh, the transition of the... the um, average players that moved from under 17 to 20 to the Super Eagles during that period was also quite impressive. Yeah? We have good numbers that, was, that were making progress. They were also intentional in reducing the age yes. of our age grade. So yeah, on that, we started well. But can we push on? For example, uh, how do we ensure that 
development actually start from uh, league football, that every MPFL have, have a proper feeders team, a structure, mm -hmm. and a competition for those guys is, is probably the next phase. But at least there was a, a footing that is administration lead. We'll see how we move on from there. Well, I'll see how we move on. Well, uh, I mean, Austin was the one who caught up with him, and, uh, you know, uh, probably still portions of that interview that we might get to see uh, later. But, I mean, Austin, you, you, you covered quite um, a whole lot um, with the time uh, you spent with him, and I don't know if there's anything we left out, but, but I think he, he made the right points. Yeah, he made some good points, but I promise our viewers I'll give them updates from the Europa League. I'll just run through that before I get into uh, some of the things that former NFL president Amadou Pini talked about. Quick one, AC Milan, they are down at home at the San Siro uh, by a single goal. They're playing against Roma in the quarterfinal of the Europa League. The game is now in the 54th minute. That goal scored by Gianluca Mancini is still the difference in that game between AC Milan and AS Roma. Bayer Leverkusen, surprise, surprise. I mean, in this fixture, you'd expect them to be on fire, but West Ham is containing them properly. It's still goalless in Germany. At Benfica, they've now raised it. Uh, they've taken a step further. Before halftime, it was 1-0. Now it's Benfica 2, Marseille 0. A name we all know, Angel Di Maria, was the second goal for Benfica. And the game between Liverpool at, and Atalanta is still 1-0. I'm just waiting to see if Ademola Lukman will be introduced in that one. Back to the conversation of football management in Nigeria. So I needed to, you know, understand what's going on here. Me and uh, Damilola, we used to be revered. Not, like respected with age grade football. Now, age grade football in Nigeria was struggling to even qualify for tournaments. We don't hear of new names, we don't know names to look forward to. Nothing is happening. Yes, I commend the NFF for what they've done with the MPFL uh, on the 15th until La Liga promises, uh, the future Eagles. But we want to see progression. And that was one aspect I, I really wanted to understand because, as Damilola said, um, Amadou Pini, Shei Akiwumi, they did so well with getting us to talk about football at that level. Why are we not seeing some level of advancement? It worries me, you know. And with women's football, um, that's in, uh, we, we couldn't take it because uh, there's just so much to talk about tonight. But we, we played it at Sports at Six. Uh, to ask him also, he's a, he's a member of CAF Executive Committee, what are we doing with the women's um, AFCON? 2024 was supposed to have that tournament. We had a fantastic competition at the last edition in Morocco. The Confederation of AFCON Football is in quiet. We don't have any kickoff date. And he said next week, uh, your meeting will be done, and that will be a top agenda you know, to discuss, because we need and to show that we give good attention to women's football, yeah. All right. So um, I know that in the days to come, in the days to come, we'll hear a lot. Let's talk about the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Um, it feels good to say they will be representing Africa at the Olympics. Uh, let's show you, by qualifying, they have entered into what a lot of people have called a group of death. So let me just go across quickly and show you uh, the teams Nigeria will play uh, against. And uh, you wouldn't be considered to be a fearful person if, if you start shivering. There you go. Nigeria will be up against Brazil at the Olympics. Women's football event, Nigeria will play against Brazil. Let that sink in. Brazil, uh, July 25. Um, that's when it's going to be uh, played. Uh, well, th this, this is Zambia, but probably we'll just quickly uh, go back to the one uh, that has uh, uh, Niger Nigeria. Uh, uh, and of course, you also look, uh, Nigeria will be up against Spain, also up against um, Japan. And so uh, in that one, Africa's other representative, uh, okay, against Spain against Nigeria, uh, Japan against Brazil, that's in Group C. Uh, the earlier picture you saw give us the dates when those matches uh, will be played. So uh, it's good to see Nigeria in Group C, what a lot of people have stamped as a group 
of debt. Let's look at the fixtures now uh, and see if we can quickly do that before uh, we go on a break. Okay, this is what I was referring to. July 25th, Nigeria against Brazil. July 28th, Nigeria against Spain. July 31, uh, Japan against Nigeria. You don't need anybody to tell you all of these nations are strong uh, women uh, football playing nations globally. So uh, all the best to the Super Falcons of Nigeria. We'll talk about Zambia uh, on the other side. We need to go uh, on a break uh, right about now. When we return from that break, we'll also look at Zambia, the group they are in, the dates when they will be playing, uh, and we take it from there. All right, that's it. Uh, Nigeria in Group D. It's a group of deaths. <laughs> so they've said. But Group C is being dubbed as a group of death by a lot of analysts, but it's Group C, actually. And, uh, Damlola, so your thoughts. Um, those nations, strong football-playing nations. No doubt about it. Um, but again, Nigeria is also a strong football-playing nation. Um, so, <laughs> I, 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 I do not agree um, with, with the position that um, probably many thought we've lost even before the first um, whistle of the Olympic will be blown. I, I don't agree with that. I, I saw the Super Falcons play that at the World Cup. Many of us did not believe they could play that mm -hmm. way. I agree that the strategy we play took something out of our attacking ability. But then, uh, it's tournament football. Whatever you have to do to make progress, please get it done. <laughs> Just move on to the next stage. Um, Brazil, at the last World Cup, were not the same, as strong as we know Brazil will be. Uh, the game against Spain, I mean, we're playing the world champion, but then we, we just beat the African champion to make the Olympic itself. Japan, no doubt, strong nation. I think they've won the Olympics once already, uh, and, but then you expect them to go for Brazil, will always get to the quarters, the semi-final of most tournaments. So, no doubt about the size of um, the, 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 the tax in front of the Super Falcons, but we also must draw strength in the fact that we have the talent. Uh, we might not have the organization, but we've also we've been here before and we've played some of these teams before. And I'm very positive. All we need is let's get the other side of preparation right. Um, the part of the administrators, get these girls, get them comfortable. Let's not start preparation by dragging a match allowance. We don't even know how much <laughs> we're going to be paid. I honestly believe that if we can get all that all out of the window. Um, the Super Falcons can surprise many at the Olympics. All right, let, let me go to Austin quickly and probably yield the floor to him. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be a scaremonger. I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom. But a lot of people back here are already saying, look, forget about medals. Even making it out of this group itself, it's a medal. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but I, I was in the, the morning show yesterday, yeah, the morning brief, and I was saying, I was telling Anne and Kai O'Day that different competitions operate with different spirits, you know? It is not Spain that you saw at the World Cup that you might see at um, the Olympics. Even Brazil, that everyone is shaking for. I remember that, that game they played with Canada and how lucky they were not to concede. It ended goalless. They crashed out to the quarterfinals at the last Olympics in Tokyo. And, um, Canada went on to win for three via penalties. Um, Sweden defeated Japan 3-1. That's not the sort of result you might see at the World Cup. Yes, both sides are respected, but some will say, oh, Japan will fight all the way. Japan and Brazil crashed out in the quarterfinals. I don't even think Spain was at that Olympics in Tokyo. So this is the Olympics. Majority of these girls, what am I even saying? The only surviving member from the 2008 Beijing Olympics is reserved goalkeeper Tochiku Olei. So that's how far we've been missing from the Olympics. So all of these big names we have now in the Super Falcons, with everything that they've achieved, the Olympics would be a new experience for them when the Olympics kicks off in Paris on July the 26th. So they need to show workings. They need to make it memorable. Again, let me just put some, you know, uh, volume to what Tamilela Onifade said about preparations. I'm the guy who comes here to tell Nigerian administrators that, look, there are some things you do before you start winning. In fact, if you do those things before you get on the pitch, 
You started winning. And preparation is very important. The mental state of the girls. Someone will say, oh, what are you talking about? There's no time. The Olympics is in July. Mm. This is April. Uh, this is April, yeah? So when do you want to, to start preparing? I told you I've met international athletes, and the ones that are going to Paris, they've, they've closed preparation maybe two years ago, and they're just conditioning and waiting now, you know? And if I call the Nigeria Olympic Committee, I'm calling on the NOC because this is their show. Ensure that we have a team that is ready to compete. Work with the Ministry of Sports Development. Work with the different federations that will feature athletes at the Olympics. And just do your thing because this is your show. We shouldn't start hearing of those ugly tales that we'll be hearing back in the day before the Olympic comes. I said what I said on the morning brief and the NOC, they are bringing out rejoinders. Damilola, how they have been covering sports in Nigeria. Has there been a time when we're expecting the Olympics that we will not say, where are they doing kids unveiling? Mm -hmm. Sometimes kids even come when they are out there. Mm -hmm. I get athletes that call me, I'm bound by this profession to protect my sources. And athletes will say, when we get international grants for training, release it to us for us to train. Don't give me training grant after Olympics. What am I going to do with the training grants? It doesn't make sense at that point. I know for sure that Ope, uh, I know Ope Yeri has qualified for the Olympics. International body has sent money. Does the guy have it? Is he prepared for the Olympics? We also have it in good standings that some athletes haven't even gotten their allowances from the African Games. These are ugly tales that I shouldn't be talking about. Should we go back and remind you of how the super of our Nigerian team that was supposed to go to the Rio 2016 Olympics were stranded in the United America, got to Brazil on the day they were to play? We don't want all of those ugly tales anymore. This is 2024. We should start doing the right things because now is the time for us to show that we can actually work beyond just having talent. Do those other things that will make talent come into good use. I mean, there's nothing to add. You, you, you said yeah. anything. And so uh, it's a big umbrella. Uh, the NLC uh, should take charge. We're talking about football tonight, but every other thing counts under the name uh, of Nigeria. And we're expecting that uh, everybody will do their part. And this uh, would be better than the best we've ever had. Uh, at the Olympics, even though the time is short, uh, it, it, must, it must be said. All right, um, I mean, we will not be forgiven if we don't talk about our African sisters, Zambia. So let's quickly talk about Zambia, uh, show you the group they are in. It's, a, it's another tough, tough group um, that they are in. Uh, I mean, just, just look at it, United States, Germany, Australia, and Zambia. I, I mean, we, we know what the Zambians have to go through uh, before they qualified, had to go and do the job um, away from home. Uh, but, but this is what it looks like. Let, let's quickly show you the dates uh, they will be playing, uh, the matches that they are involved in. I mean, you've, you've seen already how tough uh, it's going to be. They're in Group B. Uh, they're playing uh, United States, Germany, and, and of course, uh, Australia. So uh, on the 25th, uh, they will be playing. There you have it. They will be playing against the United States on the 28th. Uh, they will be playing against Australia, July 31st. I mean, same dates with Nigeria. They, they will be playing against the Germans. So all the best to uh, the girls from uh, Zambia. Wishing them all the best. D Dabla, before we leave uh, this all together, you look at that group, and you, you're somebody that doesn't sound, um, that doesn't look at these big names and think we should, we should be afraid. But it is what it is, Germany, United States, Australia, you should be worried. Uh, you should be worried. And, and the basis are quite um, simple. I mean, for the Super Falcons, we are nine-time African champion. Um, um, so when we want to play, we should also go with that pride. I'm not saying we should take it for granted. But I, I believe that African football is getting to a point where when we play anybody, they also should be weary of what we're bringing to the table. I mean, if we are that poor, these countries will not be signing our players. Uh, Super Falcons players are across the world now and because they have something. And so we should go with that pride. For Zambia, yes, this is a new terrain for Zambia. It's not 
um, is not the terrain they are very used mm -hmm. to. But don't forget, Zambia, as far as the last Wafcon is concerned, they are the third best team in Africa. They even defeated the Super Falcons in the third place match. They defeated Morocco that got to the final and got defeated by South Africa. So these four nations that played this last round of the qualifiers, without any doubt, are the best in Africa. Currently. Currently are the best in Africa currently. And so they also should go um, with that pride that they can do something. Um, I'm not going to say that Zambia will qualify or not, but I think they should take it one game at a time. Unfortunately, uh, the biggest threat is what they're going to face first. And so if they don't get something out of that game, panic yeah. sets in. It might, be difficult. Uh, it might be difficult, but that's going to be yeah, difficult. I mean, but they should uh, just go and enjoy it. All right. Yeah. I was going to just come in quickly. I mean, remember after the first leg was played, uh, Morocco went to Zambia to win to one. I told you that with what I saw Zambia do, that it wasn't over. Zambia went to Morocco and got the result. I told you that when people now come and say, oh, the Super Falcons, what are they doing? What are they doing? Football in Africa is changing. And before we jump up and say, oh, Zambia, they've got talent and all that, Let's go and find out what the Zambian FA they are doing to support women's football. They are investing heavily. They are trying to sustain on what they built at the last WAFCON. They've been to the World Cup. Now they've stopped Morocco to qualify for the Olympics. You see that it's long-term planning and it's helping them. We were only just talking about the talent that we have. Oh, we have a sister Oshala. Oh, we've got Rashida Tachibade. It goes beyond talent. Maybe when you call Barbara Banda, people will struggle to call another big name in Zambia women's football team. But look at what they are doing as a unit because they've got competent leadership in place. They are doing the right things and we're seeing the results. <laughs> All right. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're pressed for time. Uh, Austin, uh, it's always joy in our heart when we talk about this. Let's come home now. Let's go to Bayelsa to recite Atakwadi Prosperity Cup. That's right, the Prosperity Cup. I think it's sixth edition. This is so nice. This is the competition that started, and we were saying, hope they're not going to make it one-off. Governors have come and gone, and the state is still keeping the Prosperity Cup going. Big initiative to keep young persons busy, in Bielsa State, and today they did the jersey unveiling, and it's just so good when you see the number one citizen in the state, the governor of a Bielsa State, Governor Doye uh, Diri, coming out to tell the guys, look, this is serious, we are not joking this time around, we want to make it big. They also brought the trophy for season six. Season six already, this competition has given Bielsa State loads of young talent. They brought scouts to come and look at talent for football in the state. It has brought communities together. They said they want to use it to curb all of those excesses that you know you do in a society when they are not busy. And they identified football as a tool for that social change. And it is working magic. They've unveiled jersey. They've shown us the trophy. Now we're waiting for action. Let's listen to some talking points that came out of this event today in Yenagua in Bayelsa State. All excited, we're all happy. In fact, this morning, in fact, yesterday, when they called me to say today we're going to uh, kick off the, we're going to flag it off, I was so excited. And uh, you can see the ceremony, it's, everything is okay. I think we're even going to do better. Our teams are going to perform well. And what we did last time is going to even, in fact, it will be a, like a child's play. We're going to do better this time. That's my belief here. Yeah. Now we have three different tournaments in one. Uh, we started it last year and we are crystallizing it this year. We're firming it up this year. We have the main male football tournament, which is now open to all amateur footballers in Bielsa State. So uh, as an amateur footballer, you have the opportunity to, to hone your skills and to show your talents in this tournament. We equally have the female tournament. You know that the Bielsa Queens is one of the most outstanding female teams in the country. So we have the, the, the female tournament for female football players in the state. Then we have again another exciting innovation and uh brought forward by His Excellency is the para soccer. We have the para soccer edition of the tournament that should that shall equally uh, come on stream. We uh, initiated it last year and this year we are really crystallizing it. I want to thank His Excellency Senator Doi Diri for his wonderful support that has taken this tournament from the rudiments to become an international tournament. Uh, we expect about 200 themes uh, this year and uh, already we have. Uh, close to that number already registered. So the technical committee is working around the clock to put things in order so that we can have an exciting tournament.
I love it. I love it so much. Grassroots football development at its peak right then. Over 200 communities. Dami Lola, they started with just playing for the men. Now they brought women, they are the ladies into it. And he's also saying para soccer. This is the way to go. Uh, it is the way to go, Austin. Um, we said it at the beginning of the show, talking about um, grassroots development and creating the enabling environment. Uh, but I, I also heard that we're not short of this tournament here and there. We're not. Um, what they're doing in Biasa is fantastic. Consistency for six years um, is something to applaud. But again, what we also need to do is now to put a structure where we can maximize the advantage of all these players. Follow through. Uh, follow through. And you see, one of the ways you do that, players will be discovered from here. Where's the funnel to, to be able to, for, to continue their development? One of the best ways is to ensure that your professional clubs have those young age grade teams. So the players that are discovered here, they are pushed to that um, next level and then you see them grow from there. Um, it, it's the coordination that is a problem. Uh, we have too much emphasis on the senior national teams, the age grade national teams, but then a lot of individuals, yeah. a lot of states are doing a lot of things we, 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 that we need we to maximize. We neglect the conveyor belt. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's uh, move on now and talk about uh, what's currently going on, the Europa League currently uh, going on. Uh, and our man, Austin Okonakman, um, even as we are on together, uh, is scrambling uh, to see how he can uh, let us know. And we're also getting feelers from, from the yeah. back room, um, you know, telling us what is happening. But what's the situation with Liverpool? Uh, that's the biggest game of the night. There you have it on your screen, uh, Athletic. Okay, these are the quarter final results from the Champions League. Maybe I'll just quickly talk about this one, then we'll go to Europa. Athletic go defeated Dortmund. 2-1 uh, uh, yesterday. PSG, I mean, it was very entertaining encounter. Lost to Barcelona, uh, two goals to three. Arsenal, the day before, played a two-all two draw uh, with the Bavarians. That's Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. Uh, with uh, uh, Manchester City, played to a six-goal thriller. It was an interesting night of football uh, two days ago in that one. And it's Santiago better about. But we'll get to this. Uh, Austin was about to give us uh, the details of what's currently going on. Yeah, I mean, let me shock you. It has gone from bad to worse for Liverpool at Anfield. It's now Liverpool zero, Atalanta two. What a story. Uh, and, and it was the same guy that got uh, the second goal, Benfica. Two, Marseille one. Marseille trying to see if they can get back into that. The game between Bayer Leverkusen and West Ham is still goalless right there in Germany. And Roma, they are holding on tight to that slim goal. That slim goal that they have over AC Milan. But AC Milan, they are pushing hard now, trying to see how they can get something out of that one. But the surprise is Liverpool and the terrible defending that led to the second goal. Gianluca uh, Skmasa was in the right position to pick the cross. Liverpool didn't communicate properly with the lining, and so it was just him and goalkeeper, and it finished off Hamley to make it Liverpool zero, Atalanta two. Uh, Darlola, a uh, quick one. I'm interested in Roma. I mean, when they sacked Mourinho, I was like, what was, what's going on here? But it seems the club legend is turning things around. Uh, it definitely, Talking about Daniel De Rossi. Uh, De Rossi, I mean, the results... Um, the, the results don't lie. Uh, the results will tell you that since Moreno was fired, um, they've been uh, on, on an upward trajectory. And I mean, these things happen. These things happen. I, I would only see that as, um, I mean, it's not a measure to say Moreno is not a bad coach. And that, <laughs> it does happen in football. So it's one of those things. But it's good for them. I think they made the decision, as difficult as it might be for Moreno to take, is the right decision at the right for time. The and the current result is justifying that. For Liverpool, I mean, I saw the defence line. The players you yeah, mean, Yeah, I mean, let me come in. Let me, let me just come in. I said it, has, it was from bad to worse <laughs> before. Now it's bad, worse, worst. Because it's now Atalanta 3, Liverpool 0. Mm. Wow. Is, wow. that, is, that, is that the end of the, the ambition? <laughs> I mean, if your own club doesn't want to go like this, because I'm, I'm seeing Van, Van Dijk is there, uh, Simi Kass is in defence, Brahma Konate is in defence, uh, the other guy that was playing left back, shifted back, I think Joe Gomez. I mean, these guys are there. Probably the only person missing is Allison. And even the guy deputizing for Allison is also a good goalkeeper. Well, yeah. 
I'm very sure, you know, because they were saying, oh, he might win four trophies as he's going, one in the bag, three to go. It looks like... Uh, I think it's, been, it's, it's a bad night. Uh, <laughs> they can only hope for a better result next week. It's um, not over, but can it be overturned? Can, can it, it can be overturned. If Liverpool can overturn a Champions League semi-final um, defeat at, at Barcelona, mm -hmm. uh, the difference now is that they are going away, though. This is Anfield. And I think that's the big shock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it can be overturned. This Liverpool team, you can't bet against them. Um, Atalanta is having a great night. To sustain this result, they need a better night next week. Because Liverpool will throw even the kitchen sink at them uh, <laughs> in Italy next week. All right. Austin is getting a glimpse of the game. But, but, but let, me, let me say this. If they yeah. score a goal now, if they're able yeah. to maybe score a goal, would you, back, would you back them to turn things around in the second leg? If they're able, for instance, maybe to make it 3-1, would you back them to go to Italy and turn things around, especially now that the away goal rule is not there. Yeah, with the form they've shown in the Premier League, they show that they can get those late goals. They can also score early goals. So yes, if they pull one back now, um, they might just, you know, take that confidence to Italy and just give it their all. But that means if you come out that offensive, you might also get punished. Because today, that's what we're seeing. They try to come out and then long balls from Atalanta is all landing on Gianluca. Skamaka and he's taking it. He scored a brace and now they are down 3 0. So, yeah, if you score one more, it's just something to, you know, hold on to, look at it and see ways that you could turn it around. Let me give you a quick update that game between Bayer Leverkusen and West Ham United. Um, Javier Alonso has introduced Super Eagles player Victor Boniface and he came in and right away he made a difference. It's not Bayer Leverkusen one, it is not a scorer, it's Joas Hoffman that got a goal for Bayer Leverkusen, but they lead 1 0. And the game between AC Milan and Roma, 82nd minutes now, Roma still holding on to that slim goal lead, but Samuel Chukwese has been thrown into the action now. Let's see, maybe he can use his runs and do something for the team at San Siro. All right. Uh, do you foresee any, any changes with those four results? Is it Bayer Leverkusen able to hold on uh, to that slim lead? I'll, I'll be surprised if they don't. Uh, if there will be any change at all, probably in the AC Milan game, AC Milan might just be, be able. I, I see possibility AC Milan might score or Roma will get a second. I'll be surprised if Bayer Leverkusen don't hold on to this one nil lead. Okay, all right. Um, well, it's a fluid situation. We have less than three minutes to go. Uh, Austin is always free to interrupt if something happens because that's the only way we'll know. But as we prepare to go, Dami Lola, we've seen in the UEFA Champions League all four first leg matches played. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, we've, we've seen something. Is it easy for us to now look into the crystal ball and say, if I let me put you on the spot, now that you've seen the first leg <laughs> in all of those four matches. So, I'll just mention those games, make a call, Arsenal-Bayern. Arsenal-Bayern, if Arsenal wants to win, I think that game is there for them to win. Um, they, they, they are the Arsenal is the reason why Arsenal I don't want you to dance game. around, just because we uh, have limited time. Arsenal-Bayern, what do you think is going through? I think Arsenal will. Real? Manchester City, City. City will go through. Manchester City will go through. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Atletico Dortmund. Uh, Atletico will go through. PSG Barcelona. Barcelona should go through. Should go through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't have a dog in a fight. Um, oh, I do. Somehow, I do. Um, I, I would love to see the Gunners um, advance. I don't know why I just said that out loud. I would love to see them advance. It's been a long time. Uh, but, but Austin, your thoughts after seeing the first leg? Yeah, I think it was good show of football and gracious goodness. Um, Tuesday night was on fire. We saw beautiful goals in the game between Arsenal and Bayern Munich. And of course, uh, at the Barnabas, it was, oh my goodness, fantastic goals every now and then. Six goals. I was just screaming. It ended 3 3. was a classic, classic of a game between Real Madrid and Manchester City. And that's what, that's what makes that game very difficult to call. Even the game for Arsenal and Bayern. But we'll just wait to see what football can give. Um, Arsenal still a little bit burnt. With that late-minute penalty call, um, thinking, oh, look, with the way Bukayo Saka went down from um, Manonora's knee, 
it should have been a penalty. They need to take that off and approach that second leg like that's the first time they are seeing that fixture. So, uh, you know I mean, it's, 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 it's even the away teams need to show that they can win away from home in the second leg, and the home teams need to show that they have the superiority playing at home. I'm just taking a look at the Europa League. No updates yet. Still the same from what I said the other time. But we'll continue to monitor it and we'll let you know what's going on in the Europa League and the UEFA Champions League in our subscription bulletins. That's the show in London. I'm Austin Okonakwa. And everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, that's the show from here as well. But first, I want to thank Dabla Lonifari for his time on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. All it's right. Pleasure. All right. That's much we can take. Uh, it's back to work tomorrow for everybody. Um, all the best uh, from here uh, in Lagos. I'm Yemi Adebayo. We'll see you tomorrow.